certified personal trainer from Norway and I'm studying medicine here in Poland. And I've been training in the gym for over 10 years so I can back up with some decent information for you guys. Today we're going to talk about how much protein you should consume, how often, all the questions related to protein. If I forgot anything just comment below and I will try to answer them. So proteins has many different uh, responsibilities in our body. They act as a messenger which means that they communicate between cells, tissues and organs. Also we have enzymes which is also proteins which are responsible for digestion for example and the proteins provide a rigid structure for the cells and protein is also like a storage for example ferritin is a protein which stores iron so protein is not only responsible for maintenance of muscle and building muscle P protein is generally important for many different functions in our body when it comes to protein it really depends about your goal because not all of us have the same goals and uh, some of us want to build more muscle improve your performance in the football basketball swimming we have different goals when it comes to sports and that's completely fine. I started this YouTube channel this year to save my time and your time because so many people during these 10 years has asked me the same questions so many times and it makes me, of course I want to help, but it makes me tired to just always speak about the same things and trying to explain the same things even for the same people. So from now uh, I made this YouTube video so I can just send them, you know, that's why I made this channel. So let's get back to the topic. How much protein you should consume? It's relative to your situation and your body weight and your body type. Obviously a small girl of 50 kilo doesn't need the same amount of protein like a big man of 120 kilo the range is the same almost if you want to build muscle and improve your body composition and improve your performance in the gym get stronger build more muscle the general range is between 1.8 to 2.2 grams of protein uh, if you want to bulk up and if you have if you are consuming higher amount of calories you can reduce those protein a bit you can eat higher carbs and lower protein it's fine it doesn't need to be super high but generally speaking 1.8 to 2.2 per kilo lean body mass lean body mass is important because for example let's take an example we have a man of 100 kilos and he has 25 percent body fat which means that he has roughly about 75 kilo of lean body mass you think he needs about 200 grams of protein no first what I would advise him to do is to get in the healthy body fat range, which is between 8 and 15%. Because if you go too lower than 8%, it's not sustainable because our body needs uh, protein to function and um, higher body fat is not healthy as well. So 8 to 15 is ideal. Healthy body fat range for men. Girls have higher body fat range and um, somewhere between 70 to 25 for girls, that's fine. First, I would recommend him to lose the body fat and get in the, high, in the healthy body fat range. And then I would take it from there. Maintenance gains, main gain is possible. For example, let's, let's look at the situation. If you are bulking up, you don't need high amount of protein because first of all, when you consume a higher amount of carbohydrates and fats, they tend to hold on to protein much easier called the protein sparing effect which is true because when you consume higher amount of carbs and fats they tend to hold on to the protein you are already eating they hold on to like this like a best friend you know so that is why when you are eating higher amount of calories you don't really need to eat really high amount of protein you can eat some and that's fine obviously you need to eat some protein but not too much so somewhere between a 1.8 range is fine 1.5 1.8 completely fine but when you want to lose body fat let's say all these people on instagram uh, fitness magazines internet pictures those are photographed and taking picture of when they have low body fat range because they want to look good they're not in this condition for a longer period of time because it's not healthy i'm honest i'm transparent i'm telling you exactly how it works so these people are getting ready for a photo shoot so they come down with the body fat range they eat a little bit higher amount of protein because when you lose body fat and really get down deeply in the cut you need to eat more protein i will talk about why later okay but it's not simply sustainable to be in a really low body fat range for a long period of time because our hormone is affected our mood our sleep our general well-being is affected if you have too low body fat. That is why people who compete real compete in a uh, contest, in a bodybuilding contest, really many multiple times a year. That's not ideal. That's not healthy, and that's not ideal. 
You can compete, of course, but not that often. So why is protein important when you're losing fat? I will talk about this now. So we have many different reasons. One of them is pro the protein sparing effect, meaning that when you are eating low amount of calories, you have to reduce ob obviously your calories if you want to lose body fat because you have to eat in a calorie deficit. I'm talking about body fat, not body weight. It's different because if you want to lose body weight, just starve yourself starve yourself you just you will lose muscle fat and you will get down in the weight easy but if you don't lose body fat it's something else the total difference because you have to eat higher amount of protein you need to go to the gym to maintain the, the muscle mass you built you need to eat really structured and really plan, plan your day is completely different from if you don't lose body weight the protein sparing effect is means that when you're eating already low amount of carbs and fat you're you're taking away the protein sparing effect which i explained earlier which means that the carbs and fats are hold onto your protein easier now you don't have that effect nothing will hold onto your protein so you you need to eat higher amount of protein because of that number two the thermic effect the thermic effect means that our body burns more calories. This mechanism is called thermic effect. And protein has the highest thermic effect, meaning that our body burns more calories digesting protein versus carbs and fats. Fats has the least amount of thermic effect, meaning that if you eat 100 calories, more of those 100 calorie worth of fat will be absorbed directly. When you consume protein, let's say 100 calories worth of protein, less of those calories are taken because more of it are used to process digestion you know the thermic effect number three protein has a higher satiety effect meaning that protein will make you more full than carbohydrates and fats this is true because let's say for example if you eat 100 calories worth of rice and potatoes 100 calories worth of rice and potatoes okay and 100 calories worth of chicken breast and 100 calories worth of let's say fish the chicken and fish will make you more full than the carbohydrate sources i can guarantee you because first of all protein has a higher satiety effect it, it will make you fuller it has a higher thermic effect and this is really ideal if you want to lose body fat because one of the most dif difficult situation if you want to lose body fat if you're in a cutting phase is that you are going hungry this is a nightmare because then you have you are going to look for food options you're looking for trying to look for cravings your ghrelin is punching you in the face the hor the hunger hormone not ideal situation if you are full eating higher amount of protein your ghrelin is low and you are happy and you're not hungry anymore you don't you're not looking for cravings and food which means that you easily can stick into the caloric deficit so how often should you consume protein during a day let's take an example okay let's say we have a man who has a protein target for the day of 150 grams just to take it just to take an easy example and let's say he's eating four meals a day four meals a day means that those 150 grams is divided into four and he needs to eat that amount for each meal roughly it can be 10 gram less or 10 gram more each meal that's fine i mean the range right and most ideal situation is to eat between three to five meals because most of us are eating those meals already and that is completely ideal situation because the, there's something called protein synthesis which i'm going to talk about now protein synthesis is occurring when you're eating protein our body starts a process called protein synthesis meaning it's trying to build muscle all right you don't want to eat all those protein target for your day in one meal or two meals obviously you want to divide them during your day into four parts three parts or five parts according to your meals if you're really busy if you're really really busy most of you are busy during a day you should try to consume at least three protein rich meals let's say breakfast lunch and dinner and a snack you know that's completely okay four or five meals is more ideal if you're more serious about your gains then you can aim for five meals you know six meals is not better than five meals obviously ten meals is not better than five meals three to five meals is perfect most of you are already eating three to five meals and that's completely good just eat it with protein so you have protein synthesis spread out your day because you don't eat all the protein in one meal then you only have protein for one meal and the rest of the day you are not eating anything that's not ideal if you want to maximize your performance you want to divide the protein into equally during your day i would recommend eating every three to four hours if you, one meal is separated by two hours and other meal five hours it doesn't matter just don't overthink and overdo this is simple just make it simple for you and you will stick to it for a longer period of time protein synthesis occurs when you eat about 15 grams of protein 
and you want to aim for somewhere between 20 to 40 grams of protein each meal and many of you are already eating a little bit of protein just add a little bit more or reconstruct your meals so you have more protein which is ideal if you want to maximize your performance necessarily it's not better if you eat 60 grams of protein in one meal versus 40 grams it is not better because 40 grams is is a good range eating crazy amount of protein in one meal is not better than eating 40 grams keep that in mind as well so uh, thank you for watching guys if i missed anything let me know in the comment section below i have some list i want to talk about in the next video so stay tuned subscribe if you haven't i really appreciate it talk to you guys soon